Welcome to our Wheel and Anchor webinar, Scandinavia and the Baltics 5x5. Five five. This is an exciting day for me because this is the first in a series of 5x5 five five programs that we're developing. And I'm going to tell you what that means in just a second. We are headed to Scandinavia and the Baltics uh, at the end of June and July of next year, 2022, for a unique program that is um, very um, in, in, in depth. Um, in depth because well, I'll tell you in a second what five by fives are all about. For those of you who've been on many of our webinars before, you can tune out for, for half a minute um, while I explain to our, uh, our new attendees, our new members, what Wheel and Anchor is all about. Um, our, uh, our organization was inspired um, by, you know, my now over 30 years in the, in the, in the travel industry of having traveled with people from all over, not just Canada, but all over the world. And what I found was, is that when you get a bunch of people who have a like-minded view about what travel should be about and how we should experience other traditions and cultures and so on, we just have a lot of fun. And so our idea here is to bring like-minded travelers together. That's what Wheel and Anchor is all about. Um, and my personal mission is, is that um, that all of us uh, at Wheel and Anchor and those who are yet to, to join our community become well-traveled. And well-traveled, this is an example, exactly an example of what well-traveled means in my books, is, is that you have a chance to spend time and sit around at a coffee shop or in a wine bar or take a cooking class or do those things that most trips don't allow for, um, which enables you to say, yeah, I've really experienced that particular place. I haven't just checked it off the box. Um, and in doing so, you become connected and there's been friends made across members who have, you know, from, from our group um, that have subsequently traveled together, but also um, equally as importantly is the people that we meet along the way in these, uh, in these wonderful, um, in these wonderful countries, because we, um, you know, there, there's such amazing people all over the world, we can celebrate some of our differences. Joining me today, of course, my team with whom I could not possibly do this without, um, so my name is Gordon, by the way, I'm the founder of Wheel and Anchor. For those who are new, I'm joined by Joel Curry, uh, and who's my co-founder, and as well as Paula, who many of you will have spoken to on the phone. Uh, and she is our trip specialist uh, that um, deals with all of our member inquiries. So, uh, and they'll be in the background silently um, monitoring things and making sure that everybody's happy and everything goes according to plan. And on that note, what is our plan for today? Well. Um, it's all about you uh, wanting to find out a little bit about what five by fives are all about and specifically in this case Scandinavia and the Baltic countries. I'm here to be your guide. I will also be the host for this trip next year and we are going to take a look at what Scandinavia and the Baltic countries have to offer. So first of all, what is a five by five? What's behind the concept? Let me uh, touch off the points. Will I be running this trip in the fall instead of the summer at some point? Uh, Helen, uh, let me get back to you on that question. Not sure about that. So at the moment, we're targeting, uh, we're, we're, we're heading there in, in the summer of next year. So what's a five by five? So first of all, uh, it's five times five nights. So why five nights? Well, most tours, most organized tours that are offered out there, you know, you you tend to hop around. You spend a night here, two nights there. If you're lucky, you might get three nights in a city. It's barely time to sort of stop and unpack your suitcase. Um, and it's always about where are we going next? And it's a little bit hectic. Uh, and this, when you think about, um, you know, cruises, for example, and, and many of the cities on this itinerary, for example, are are offered on on Baltic cruises, um, and but you know when you arrive in a place and you have sort of just the day or you have the day and the night and you you know you're worried about the schedule and checking in and checking out, how do you really have the chance to experience something? And in, so with five nights, considering you need a day of arrival and a day of departure, which means you are you and um, you can have four full days um, experiencing a city and. In all my travels around the world, I found that, you know, four days is the amount of time that if you spend four days in a place, you can go, I feel like I've been a part of it. So that's the rationale between five, uh, five nights 
and typically we'll have itineraries that will include five stops. In this case, it happens to be six, um, but you don't have to do all of them. And so that is point number three, start and end what you want. The idea here is, is that you don't have to do the entire itinerary. You can start at any one of the cities and do um, 10 nights. We do uh, have a minimum of two, so you can do anywhere between 10 nights and 30 nights on a trip like this. So you could say, oh, well, I feel like just doing the Scandinavian countries or no, I've actually been to those ones. I did a cruise. I, I got my fill of, of, Scandin of, of the Nordic countries. Now I wanna do visit the Baltic capitals. So all that is possible. Um, we balance between organized and leisure time. So out of the four full days, roughly two days are programmed. So we take you to the sites that are interesting, inspiring. We allow you to meet locals. Um, sometimes we'll actually travel into the surrounding region. So it's not just focused on the city that we're staying. We go to the countryside to get a, a, a glimpse of what, um, what rural life is like as well. The other half the time, is free time. And when we say free time, it's just not like, okay, goodbye, we'll see you later. But rather, you know, I'm there with our local guide to sort of help you find the things that you want to do. And we're also going to give you in each of these cities, a city card that enables you access to the whole public transportation network. And in most cases, uh, also admission to many of the attractions, there's more than you could possibly ever see in four days. So you know, if you've ever thought of being on a trip before, and, and again, I particularly, and I'm not knocking cruises, but, you know, you've been on a cruise and you came into that city, it's like, ah, oh, I wish I had time to see this, or God, if we only had time to stop and have dinner there, or you see all these wonderful places, there's never time to do it. Now, in this format, there's time to do it. Uh, and when I say live like a local, uh, so we've chosen hotels and restaurants in these cities that aren't tour group hotels. And again, this is the one of the, the, the downfalls of sort of regular group travel is, is that it tends to be done by tour operators who offer the same program to people over and over and over again. And they deal with the same hotels and tour group hotels and tour group restaurants and everything is tour and you're surrounded by tourists all the time. In this kind of a program, first of all, some of the meals that we have are included. We're picking out the restaurants with our guides who we have picked also uh, directly. Uh, and we're going to places where the locals eat and we'll do some of the things that the locals do. This is how you experience a city. Um, and in order to do all of that, we have to do it with smaller groups. So first of all, I'm not a fan of big groups anyway. Most of our groups are sort of 16 to 20 people, sometimes a few more, sometimes a few less. Um, but we can't travel around in this fashion um, on trains and ferries and, and moving around um, in larger groups. So in any event, logistics, uh, logistics wise, it's all about smaller groups. So that is the concept behind five by fives. That's what it's all about. If you have questions on that at any point, let me know. Let's dive into the program now because we've got a lot of cities to cover and I wanna give you a good overview of what you're gonna see. Of course, if you haven't already gotten the brochure, there's a lot more details in there about what the possibilities are in all these different cities. Looking at the region as a whole, and in fact, it probably should be called the Nordics and the Baltics, because of course, we're not going to Norway um, and we are going to Finland, which is not technically part of Scandinavia. So if you're a geography buff, uh, uh, sorry, Joel just uh, clarified for me that the, you know, it has the brochure yet, it'll be sent out with the replay of the webinar. So thanks for clarifying that, Joel. Um, so we're visiting Sweden, uh, Denmark, Sweden, Finland, and of course the Baltic countries, all surrounded by the Baltic Sea. As I said before, many of these countries are actually on, um, you know, on Baltic cruises. And I imagine some of our members have done Baltic cruises and have touched on some of these cities. All of them, I mean, the, 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 the Scandinavian countries, so Denmark, Sweden, Finland, often rated as the best countries in the world to live. So to be able to go and sort of get a glimpse into why that is, is fascinating. They're beautiful cities, but likewise, um, the cities of the Baltic countries, which of course were part of the Soviet Union until the fall of the Iron Curtain, have transformed completely in the last 30 years and are an amazing juxtaposition between the history that you find um, throughout cities in Europe that have their own charm and flair, but you, you sort of see the remnants of what that um, past was all about. So uh, 
this is why we're focusing on this region in, in, in one whole program. Looking at the map, we start in Copenhagen, of course, the capital of Denmark, a charming country in and of itself, um, a great place to start the trip, also partly because uh, Air Canada runs at least out of Toronto nonstop flights into Copenhagen, uh, at least they did, let's hope they do that again. Uh, and from Copenhagen, after our time there, we'll cross over by train heading up to Stock Stockholm. So we'll go all through the beautiful Swedish countryside, um, spend five days in Stockholm. I'll tell you why it's my favorite of the cities uh, on the list. And I mean, everything's my favorite. I, you know, I love to traveling all these places. Uh, from Stockholm, we travel by overnight ferry into Helsinki, of course, the capital of Finland, um, where we'll see, uh, you know, a wonderful part of, of, of Finland, not just Helsinki, but also the, the countryside, again by ferry over to Tallinn, uh, Estonia, um, and then the last two legs will be by uh, private guided coach with some interesting stops along the way from Tallinn to Riga, and then from Riga, Latvia, ending in Vilnius. And of course, as I said, you can start or end at pretty much any one of these cities. So you could do just Copenhagen, Stockholm, Helsinki, or Helsinki, Tallinn, Riga. That's your choice. Okay, so day by day, where do we start? Let's start in Copenhagen. Um, and uh, Copenhagen, as I say, has is what is probably is, is, is it's actually the most visited city in Scandinavia. So tourism wise, um, this is the place that most people will go because let's face it, all, the rest of it is so far up north, a lot of people don't get there. So, you know, mass tourism, mainstream tourists visiting Europe, um, you know, visit London, Paris, Rome, uh, and, you know, maybe Berlin, Copenhagen, Amsterdam. Um, so Copenhagen is, is one of those cities, whereas, whereas all the rest of the ones on the list are you know, a notch down in, in each case. What do I like about Copenhagen? Well, first of all, Copenhagen is probably the cycling capital of the world. Uh, and even more so, everybody thinks about Amsterdam in that regard. But the average person in, Cop in, in Copenhagen cycles three kilometers a day. Everybody is on bikes. An interesting fact, considering they do have winter um, and, uh, you know, and winter can be quite cold, maybe not as cold as, as Montreal or Calgary. Um, but uh, even so, um, cycling is a very big part of the culture there. Um, uh, of course, Denmark is also known for Lego, um, something that we most of us all played with as 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 uh, children. And of course, this is one of the biggest exports um, in uh, from Denmark. Um, but Copenhagen as well is is very pedestrian friendly. In fact, the Struget, which is the pedestrian street that um, starts right behind where we're staying in our hotel in the center of town. Um, and it's the longest pedestrian shopping street in the world. Uh, and uh, it, it, like many of the cities on this itinerary, Copenhagen is uh, adjacent to the sea and the harbor. Uh, and so it is super picturesque. It's also a foodie destination. So there are uh, apparently at last count, 25 Michelin star restaurants in Copenhagen. I'm a foodie, um, I love to eat. So uh, this is one great place to do it. Each day of the trip, just like in Copenhagen, when we arrive, um, depending on how everybody feels, we'll do a little bit of an orientation tour with our guide so you understand what's around, what's around the hotel. When you have your free time, you'll, you'll already have a sense of, of the things that you can do and see. And in Copenhagen, just with all the cities, we're staying right in the heart of town. So uh, everything is really at your doorstep. On our first full day, um, we'll have some great, um, uh, sites, some great highlights to see, particularly the Danish Royal Palace, the Amelienborg Palace, um, super grand palace. Uh, and um, it's just actually at the end of the Struget, so we can walk to there. Um, a, there's a lot of walking on these trips, I must say. So um, it, 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 is, it is, you know, you, you need to be fairly active. Um, and we'll enjoy, like we will at many of the stops along the way, you know, sort of the traditional local cuisine. So in, in, in Denmark, it's the smørbrød, which is the open face sandwiches, often with, you know, fish on them or um, just vegetables or whatever it happens to be. And in the afternoon, we'll venture a little bit out of town and go to the lovely fishing village of Dragur, which is on the Orison Strait. And from here, you'll have a, an amazing view of the bridge that connects Denmark and Sweden. Um, on the second day in 
in, in uh, Copenhagen will actually head out of town. And again, this is something I like to do because often the, tr the, the tours are focused just on the city. But Helsingør um, is up uh, about 50 minute train ride north of, of Copenhagen. And it is home to, among other things, the Kronberg Castle, which is known around the world as Hamlet's Castle. But it's just, it's a fascinating little medieval town that most tourists don't get to visit. And by going to a place like this, we get to sort of see how the regular Danish people live without sort of all the tourists around. Being that we're going in July, um, there's there's lots of tourists around, particularly in, in, in Copenhagen. But when we get when we get out to Helsingør, uh, then we'll see more locals uh, enjoying midsummer because of course we're going to be there just after the summer equinox which is celebrated across Scandinavia. Um, it's a wonderful time of the year to visit uh, and uh, we'll have time to check out the medieval quarter and and uh, then we can head back to Copenhagen on our own because you'll have this transport card that enables you to do whatever you um, that enables you to sort of travel on your own. So you're not bound to going with the group. Um, and it's super easy, the public transport in Denmark. Um, on, we'll then have the first of two fr free days in, in Copenhagen. And of course, what are you gonna do in your free days? Well, if you're really brave, you could rent a bike and, and drive around yourself around. I think a lot of us would be intimidated by that because they're very adept at driving in traffic on bikes. Um, but I remember when I was in uh, Copenhagen the first time years and years ago, in fact, when I was backpacking across Europe in my twenties, um, we went to the Carlsberg city, which is the fourth largest brewery in the world. And it is an incredible sight in and of itself. But you might want to take a boat tour as well along uh, the, the, the wonderful harbor of uh, which has got modern buildings and super ancient buildings. Um, fantastic way to experience Denmark. On our other free day uh, in Denmark, in Copenhagen, uh, you also have the option, for example, to head a little bit out of town on your own as well, like Roskilde, the town, uh, which is about a 40 minute train ride away, is home to the, one of the largest music festivals in Europe, um, which actually happens to be going on at the time that we're gonna be visiting here. So if you are a music fan, you've got to check out the Roskilde Festival, um, which is just outside of Copenhagen. And uh, it's like this, the, the size of, uh, of Glastonbury or, or, or Coachella. Um, but you might want to hang around town and visit something like the Cisterna Contemporary Art Museum, which is a subterranean water cellar that they turned um, into a, uh, this incredible museum, or the Tivoli Gardens, uh, which is an amusement park similar to our um, CNE, our Canadian National Exhibition, or the or the PNE out uh, out in Vancouver, um, uh, which is and again those are both right in the heart of the city, just a stone's throw from um, uh, from our hotel. Uh, so uh, regardless, there'll be lots to do in Copenhagen. From here, we will head out by train, as I said, across the beautiful Swedish countryside. First of all, across the Oresund Bridge. Uh, and uh, it's about a five and a half hour journey and we will end up in Stockholm. And Stockholm is my favorite of the Scandinavian capitals. I'm not even sure why they're all so beautiful, but I love the fact that it's situated, um, like the whole city is, is divided amongst 14 different islands, which makes it so incredibly picturesque. This picture is, a, is, a, is really a great one. Um, and uh, the moniker, Venice of the North. And once again, when we arrive, we'll have time. Uh, our hotel is close to the railway station and we can wander through Gamla Stan, the old town which sits on its own island. Um, we can head across again on another island is uh, Riddarholmen, which is where the, the Swedish royal family um, resides. And uh, we'll, we'll get a sense of this, again, very walkable, um, easy city to, to, to get around. And uh, Jean uh, Winters is uh, commenting about how she loves the beauty of Stockholm. And I, uh, I, I agree. I think it's, uh, it, it is my favorite of the, of the Scandinavian cities. On our first day, we'll celebrate a little bit of the local life by doing a fika tour, which means we're going to go and have coffee and cakes. The Swedish are notorious for, you know, let's go grab a coffee and a cake and they end up spending half the day there. So we'll do that in the area of Sudermalm, South Island, uh, and uh, probably spend more time than we'd like because, you know, that's when people chit chat and meet others and we get a chance to sort of hang out with the locals. We'll also head over to Djurgården, uh, which is another island where they have this incredible 
um, museum, and I'll mention museums a lot. Museums aren't for everybody, but this one has the Vasa ship in it, which is a 17th century warship, and it's really one of the best uh, sort of um, ancient warships that's been completely restored that you've ever seen. It's completely fascinating. Um, and we'll wander around some of the dis different areas of Stockholm with our guide. And again, you'll get a sense of some of the things that you might want to visit on your free days. In fact, the next day on this trip will be a free day. Um, you might, for those who are history buffs, they might want to go out and see Skansen, which is an amazing uh, open air museum that looks back into Swedish history. For active people, there's uh, uh, an opportunity to go to the Sormland Trail, which is a thousand kilometer long trail that starts uh, just outside of Copenhagen. Um, and keep in mind, again, as I said before, it's uh, it's summer equinox. So up here, it's light until like 11 p.m. at night. So uh, the Scandinavians come to life at this time of the year, because of course, in the wintertime, it's dark. So they're all hibernating at home, uh, because uh, there's, there's, you know, it, it's darkness for, for, for most of the day. But now is when they're all out in their various beer gardens and so on and so forth, enjoying the beautiful summertime. We have two days um, to, uh, sorry, our, our, our next day, our other free days after this, um, we have to go out and visit the Stockholm Arch Archipelago, in particular Sandham. The Stockholm Archipelago uh, is this, that whole corner of um, to the east of Stockholm itself, 30,000 islands uh, in the, the Baltic Sea at this point. So we'll take a ferry trip out to get a sense of the, a bit of the rural part of Sweden, in particular, this charming little village of Sandham, um, which is completely car free. Uh, so people only ride around on bikes. Uh, and it, it gives us a great flavor for what life is like in this incredible archipelago, which if you close your eyes, it looks a little bit like um, like the countryside in sort of northern, central to northern Ontario. Um, it's, it's, it's really amazing, very, very picturesque. On our other free day, so the next day, we'll actually be heading out. So technically, we have four nights in Stockholm because our fifth night is on the overnight ferry making our way to um, Helsinki. And so we'll have time in the morning to, uh, uh, in, in fact, most of the day because the ship leaves around four in the afternoon. Uh, and you might want to walk over, it's about 15 minutes to Stockholm City Hall, which is where the, um, is, is most known as where the Nobel Prize is, uh, is held every year. Not the Peace Prize, but all the other Nobel Prizes are handed out at Stockholm City Hall. And it also has the largest organ uh, in all of Scandinavia. It's gigantic. It's, it's a fantastic place that you could spend easily a few hours there, um, grab, a, grab a coffee and a, and a fika like the Swedish do um, before we jump on our ferry and make our way out to Helsinki. And on our way out, we travel through a different part of the archipelago. So even though we're traveling all night long, because it's light till late at night, um, you'll get a chance to see um, more of this uh, amazing group of islands. In fact, we'll stop at the Oland Islands um, in the middle of the night, uh, which are a group of islands between Sweden and Finland. So for the, um, the, for the late owls, you'll get a, a glimpse of those as well um, before we arrive in Helsinki the following day. And mid-morning, uh, the next day, we arrive in Helsinki. And, you know, being Scandinavia, of course, the port is almost in the middle of town, so we can literally walk off the ship to our hotel. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and and start to take in a bit of Helsinki. Um, what, what I found interesting about Helsinki is it's, it's almost more like a big town than a city. It's, it's uh, for the capital of Finland, it has only about 700,000 um, people. And Finland for me always, I, I always think about the Finns because they're, they're such sort of quiet reserved people. And that's certainly not universally true. I think they're gradually sort of coming, coming into becoming more extroverted. Um, but there's a there's a there's a, a famous line that says an introverted Finn looks at his shoes when he's uh, when he's talking to you, but an extroverted Finn looks at your shoes. Um, and, you know, I've met a lot of Finns in my in my time traveling around Finland and other parts of the world. And I, it's, it's so true. They're just sort of so, so quiet spoken. Um, and yet, uh, the, the, the city 
is, is very vibrant and in the meantime, full of people from all over the world because it's become one of the design capitals of, um, of Europe. And we'll get a taste of that on our orientation tour. We'll head off to see that big white uh, building that you saw in the picture there, which was St. Nicholas Cathedral, uh, which is one of Helsinki's landmarks. The next day, uh, we will do again a, a full tour looking around uh, Helsinki in particular, um, one of my favorite spots is this rock church, which has uh, amazing acoustics. It's literally hewn right out of the rock. Um, so if we're lucky during our stay, there may be a concert or something there that we can experience um, the acoustics uh, of, this, of this amazing, amazing church. Um, in the afternoon of that day, we'll have a guided visit of Suom and Lina. And I actually have not been to Suom and Lina, despite, despite the fact that I've been in Helsinki a number of times. Um, it's one of the largest sea fortresses in the world. And in fact, they refer to it as Gibraltar of the North. Um, and it covers eight islands just uh, immediately on the, uh, off of uh, the, the, the coast of, of Helsinki. Uh, so it, it's a phenomenal, phenomenal um, uh, piece of of, of ancient architecture, frankly. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll leave everybody there um, to explore uh, after the guided tour, because again, you will have a card that enables you to use all of the transport system around Helsinki. It's super easy, it's safe, everybody's friendly, everybody speaks English, um, and you'll be able to explore a little bit on your own. Um, and uh, so then the next day we will again in, keeping with sort of our philosophy here is we'll head out a little bit into the countryside. In this case, we're gonna to go to um, Porvu, which is a, a beautiful little historical town um, about an hour to the, to the east of, of Helsinki. And the one thing about Finland, um, which applies to all the Scandinavian countries, but in particular Finland, the, the, the natural landscape is, is incredible. The forest, the lakes, it's a lot of people refer to it as like the Canada of Europe. Um, and so you think, well, why would I want to visit that? It, it is different. I mean, there is a certain um, flavor to the, the, the forests that are there that is a little bit different than at home. The appreciation of the Finns is so great. Um, in fact, they have a law in Finland that all of the nature is open to everybody. So even private property, Finns can go and, and uh, visit everything in the country and you know pick the berries and the mushrooms and all the rest of this kind of thing. And so it has a, a, a distinct um, aura to it that is, is a little bit different than what we have at home. We'll stop at this Utella Nature Reserve on our way back from, from Porvu uh, and, um, and experience a little bit about what Finland's nature is all about. So on the first of our free days, um, Helsinki again has a, a myriad of things uh, that one can do. Um, um, there is this amazing architectural wonder, uh, this modern um, tower, I guess, in the middle of town, that is a chapel of silence. It's literally a public meditation facility in the middle of Helsinki. One of the oddest things I've ever seen, but but quite fascinating to visit. But you might want to stop and, and again, part of the, the um, the benefit of this kind of a trip is, is that you could literally just stop in a coffee shop or go for an ice cream. Um, the Finns are incidentally the biggest coffee drinkers in the world. So there'll be lots of coffee shops around the corner. Or you might want to go, of course, and take an authentic Finnish sauna. Finland has something like more than 3 million saunas in the country. There's more saunas than people. So, you know, it'd be, even though we're there in summer, they, they, they use the sauna all the time. They hold business meetings. Um, in the sauna. It's really a, an, an integral part of, of their culture and their tradition. On our other free day, on our second free day in, in Helsinki, um, as I mentioned, it is a leading European capital of design. And so I would definitely take a, a bunch of members and wander over to the design district. It covers 25 blocks just adjacent to the downtown part of Helsinki. Um, and people have uh, migrated into Finland from all over the world um, because of this emphasis on design. And the design museum is just one of the many stops, but there's so many galleries and 
um, artist studios and so on to visit um, in this really incredible area. It's worth spending the better part of a day. For people who are a little bit more active adventurous, you might head out to um, Piljajarsi, which is one of the islands outside uh, of Helsinki where you can you know, hike and walk and enjoy a bit more of the nature. But in any event, as is tradition for each segment, we will have a farewell dinner at the end and then um, uh, head, to, head to bed before we get up in the morning and um, make our way out of the Nordic countries uh, and head to the Baltic countries. So with Helsinki, we cross the Baltic Sea and then the next morning, uh, well, sorry, we, we'll, we'll stay in Helsinki for the night and in the morning we will take the ferry over. It's about a two to three hour ferry ride from Helsinki to Tallinn uh, and uh, it will be in another world altogether. Although Tallinn and Helsinki are relatively close. So you'll find that a lot of Estonians actually work in Helsinki and a lot of uh, Finns will go to Tallinn for the weekend because Tallinn is the gem of the Baltic. Um, it is a medieval walled town. So it's one of the few towns in Europe where the entire wall around the uh, old city is still intact. In fact, it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Um, and uh, of course, we'll meet anybody that decides to join us here, as with any of the stops along the way. So you could have joined us in Helsinki or um, you could fly in and just do the uh, Baltic portion of the trip. Uh, and, uh, you know, Estonia is has close ties to Finland. But again, it's a different culture, a different language, a different, uh, you know, a different attitude and everything. I mean, there's a lot of Estonians I know that, that have migrated to Canada. You probably know some. I have some Estonian friends back home. Um, and when you visit the country, you really get a sense of, of what it's all about. So on our, so we'll, of course, do our orientation as we ordinarily do. We are situated again in the middle of the town. Um, so um, you can always venture out and, and explore the old town on your own. The next day, we will head out to see a bit again of the rural part of Estonia, in particular, Prangli Island. Um, and so this place here has been inhabited for like 600 years. And the, 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 um, uh, the fishermen have been maintaining this tradition for generations and generations. So this is the kind of place where you really meet true Estonians. Um, and, you know, most tourists, uh, certainly overseas tourists, never make it to a place like Prangli. Uh, and so that's why it's such a gem of a place um, to visit. And so we'll have a time to see what the, the life of fishing is all about, still very important and integral to their economy. Um, and uh, we'll be able to then again at leisure come back to Tallinn um, and then go out for a nice dinner and taste some delicious Estonian food. On our second organized trip day, we'll visit another rural town um, that is not far away. It's another coastal town called Hapsalu. Uh, and uh, this town is fascinating again, once again, because it's a little bit off the ordinary tourist beaten track. I mean, you'll find Finns that, that visit Hapsalu, but it's unlikely that you'll run in, into many other North Americans here. Um, and I love this little town because uh, all of the houses date back to over a hundred years old, which is, is nothing in the greater scheme of, of European history. But compared to some of the other cities, the, 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 the capitals of Scandinavia and the Baltic countries have quite modern components to them. They've really developed a lot in the last 30 years since the fall of the, uh, of the Iron Curtain. So these kind of places like Hapsalu is where you get to experience the real Estonia. We have, of course, again, two free days in, uh, in Estonia, in Tallinn, to um, check things out. Um, and as I said before, what makes the Baltic state so interesting is to witness the transformation that has happened, particularly in, in Tallinn, since the fall of, uh, of the Soviet Union. Uh, and to see, you know, there's a tremendous um, um, modern and technological um, innovation that is happening, particularly in Estonia, and they're they're really big on business development, inviting entrepreneurs. So it's a very vibrant place. Um, you'll find some interesting little corners like the Balti Jam Market, full of really cool trinkets and treasures. And I know a lot of our members aren't really souvenir hunters, but there's there are some very unique things that you can find in a market like this. Personally, I'd probably take a small group and visit the. 
Teleskivi Creative City, which is one of these districts that was an old communist warehouse district, and they've converted it into an artist area, once again, with boutiques and galleries. Um, and it really, it's where the youth of Estonia sort of come to life. Um, and uh, it's, it's an amazing, amazing place to visit. Um, on the other day in, the other free day in, in Tallinn, um, if somebody's looking for a little bit more activity to be a little more active, you might head out to Perita, um, which is outside of town. It's a beautiful, it's a river um, where you can do some lovely hiking and walking and again, experience a bit of the countryside. Um, for those who are interested in, in history and the history here again is very different because of the occupation by the Germans and then by the Russians. Um, they have a museum dedicated to, um, to the, uh, these periods of time in Estonian history when they were occupied. Or you might visit uh, the, uh, the, this beautiful Kadriorg Palace um, that you see here in the photo, or just hang out in the old town of Tallinn. Again, um, I can't emphasize enough how my experience of having traveled with people all the time is they just want to go and, you know, experience the coffee shops and experience um, the little boutiques and, and soak it all in. And, the, and these cities are really optimum for that. So that will be our last day. We will have a welcome dinner as we do in every city on the uh, on this, sorry, a farewell dinner, I should say, on every city on this trip. In the morning, we'll get up and those who um, decide to fly home uh, will we'll do that. Uh, and then the others, we will um, this time take a guided coach trip um, with, our, with our wonderful guide. Um, Overall, it's about a four and a half hour journey, but we're going to stop part way in a, in a beautiful coastal town called Parnu, um, where we'll stop for lunch and have a nice tour. And then in the later part of the afternoon, we'll get to the capital of Latvia, Riga. Um, and Riga, again, Riga and, and Vilnius, our last stop on this trip, are really amazing and and they call them best kept street secrets in Europe because you know we all know the other major cities that have been visited but these ones are ones that are just you know they're for the real traveler the people who are looking to explore um, beyond um, beyond the norm if you will um, Riga is best known for its incredible Art Nouveau architecture. You get a little bit of a taste of it here, but about a third of the buildings in central Riga uh, have this uh, design flavor. So we'll have a chance in our orientation tour to, to wander around, get a sense of the old town. Um, I like the city because it has these gigantic parks and it also has a huge food market. In fact, the, the biggest one in Europe, and I'll tell you about that one in a second. In keeping with the sort of the normal flow and philosophy, we'll, we'll spend a day outside of town and heading out to uh, the Gauja Valley, so a little bit of Latvian countryside. This area is full of medieval castles, and this one called Sigulda is just one of them. Um, there is also an amazing ethnographic museum that's uh, situated next to a lake, um, and it gives you a great in arc, uh, insight into this sort of the folk architecture from the area. And again, you know, Latvia, um, although, you know, occupied by the Soviets for so many years, um, has, a, has a very distinct culture and feel to it. And you'll notice really, you'll see some significant differences between Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania as you go through, even though the countries share a lot in common, particularly their evolution from Soviet times. Um, the other day there, uh, sorry, this, the, the, the next day we'll visit um, um, the Rundale Palace, um, which is a special day because the, the Latvians are super proud of this, uh, of this particular castle, of this palace, which is a 138 room palace that was built in the 18th century. And it was the gardens in particular were modeled after Versailles. So you arrive there and you think, oh my God, you're in, you know, you're in Versailles, you're in Paris. Uh, and uh, it is really, really a gem of a place and, and worth a visit. We'll, we'll cap off this day by doing a Latvian cooking class, trying out some of their specialties of Latvia, like beet, cold beetroot soup. Doesn't sound appealing, tastes way better than it sounds, or, um, or their potato pancakes. Um, again, it's always neat to, to have an experience of, of making some of the lo local dishes. And I, I can think on many trips that people have taken these ideas home and, um, and had little reunion dinners where we, we've tried out some of the recipes. Two free days in Riga. Uh, there are 
in some incredible museums, some of the best museums on, on all the cities in this trip to visit. Um, there is the, you know, there's a, there's a museum of modern art. Uh, there's of course an Art Nouveau museum dedicated to all those buildings that are inspired by that form of architecture. Um, but uh, hopefully, uh, we'll, I, I think during the five days, undoubtedly we'll have a chance to go to the, to the opera or the, or the ballet, um, which um, Riga is quite famous for. Uh, and again, another way to experience the, the art and culture of a city. Um, on the other free day, for those that are a little more adventurous, might head off to Jormala, which is a coastal town uh, and has one of the largest beaches uh, in the uh, in the Baltic Sea, 26 kilometers of white sand beach. Uh, and of course, we are there in the middle of summertime. So, you know, if, if it's a mission for you to, to, you know, to take a swim in the Baltic Sea, then Jormala would be the place to do that. Joel, we uh, need to advance by a slide. Um, and, uh, but the town itself is, is, is super charming as well. But of course, if you even spend the day in Riga, you know, you could just go to that food market, which has 3000 vendors, as I said before, the largest one in Europe, um, a great way to spend, um, spend the day. Um, and so then we do our final leg, um, which is down to Lithuania, or if, if, if that's enough for you, you can of course fly home from Riga um, or stick on for the last uh, and arguably one of the nicest and, and most uh, unique cities on our trip, which is Vilnius, the capital of Lithuania. Um, and uh, on our way there, we'll stop at this very, very cool site called the Hill of the Crosses, where 100,000 crosses have been erected as a symbol of Lithuanian nationalism. It's a, it's a very moving site, um, and it's uh, sort of on the way to, to Vilnius from, from Riga. This is a, a very, very old town. The, the, the center of the town has 1,200 historical buildings in it. In, is, this is really one of those perfect cities to just get lost in. You know, and I often say to people um, in some of the other cities around Europe, like Venice, just forget your map, just go and get lost. You'll find your way back eventually. And this is one of those places where you could spend four days literally just wandering around in the old town. We'll give you an orientation nonetheless. Uh, so, so that you, 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 you can remember where, how to find your way back to the hotel. We have a lovely hotel, but um, selected by the way here in Vilnius. Um, and the next day we'll actually head out to the former capital of Lithuania, which is a city called Kaunas. It's not far away. Uh, and we'll see some, some really spectacular castles. Some of the nicest castles um, um, that we'll see on, on the whole trip. And, you know, just like I was saying before, is we, we travel to these smaller cities to get a taste of what life in these in the uh, in these countries is really like. Um, the cities, all of them, Tallinn, uh, Riga, Vilnius, have become quite cosmopolitan over the last twenty years because there's been a drive to bring foreign investment and bring other people in. But it's you know the real authentic flavor of these countries that you find when you visit the smaller towns. Um, our second organized day in, uh, in Lithuania, in, in Vilnius, will be um, quite a sobering day because we'll, we'll make a visit to the um, Panariai uh, Holocaust Park. Uh, and uh, in, in the afternoon, we'll hit, we'll hit Trakai. And, uh, you know, we often forget, uh, you know, we all remember distinctly the, the history of, of Poland and the Czech Republic and the terrible tragedies that happened in the Second World War. Um, but a similar thing happened as well in Lithuania. And so visiting Panerai is, is a chance to, um, uh, uh, to, to get a sense of, of what happened there that is so often forgotten by so many people. Um, and then we'll also visit this beautiful castle called Trakai in the middle of Lake Galv um, and uh, a, 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 great, a great day for sure. So our last two days on the trip um, for, uh, that are at leisure, um, first of all, um, as I said before, the, the best thing to do in Vilnius is literally just wander around and check out the little shops and talk to the people. The people are so friendly um, in, in Lithuania. It's, it's really a wonderful place to just hang out and maybe stop and try some of their acorn coffee, which is 
they've adopted acorns um, as a caffeine free version of um, you know the coffee that we're so accustomed to um, but they've got some cool museums as well like a museum of illusions which just focuses on optical illusions so it's neat to see some of these the, these different things that you you don't expect to see um, and then finally on the very last day um, you may want to um, explore and uh, and and really it reflect on the the whole trip and all of these incredible capital cities that we visited. Um, of course, you can go to see the palace of the the Grand Dukes, um, but uh, actually Vilnius has like like a lot of the cities, and I haven't really mentioned them. They have sort of some alternative parts of town, and in Vilnius, it's called Uzupis, which is the bohemian side of the town. It's the alternative. It's where sort of back in the day you would say that like the the punk rockers sort of um, hung out and it's full of street art um, and some really um, sort of uh, out of this world um, designs and are you know artists and um, it's it's a fascinating game adjacent to the to the city center um, and and a very good way to meet and talk to the young um, Lithuanians that have have stayed there and um, uh, really are reflective of the of the new generation of, of people that's up and coming there. So um, it's uh, we'll have a terrific farewell dinner when we're in uh, when we're in in, in Vilnius um, and and a great celebration of um, what will have been you know a, a long trip, but I think a very rewarding trip because again we'll have um, not just sampled but really immersed ourselves into the culture of all of these cities. So let me cover a few of the details about how this program works. Of course, it's all in the brochure that is going to be sent to you uh, together with the replay of this webinar. That'll probably happen tomorrow. Um, the program is divided up into segments. So as I mentioned, you can book um, two or more um, segments and do as much of this or the whole entire itinerary. You could come come with me for all 30 nights. Um, and so what we've done is for, for anyone booking four or more segments, there is a $100 reduction per segment. So if you book all six, um, you add them all together, you deduct $300. Um, the single occupancy price, I mean, unfortunately, we can't get away from these single occupancy things strictly because that's how the hotels work. But they're relatively modest as trips go. Um, and again, a lot of people would visit this part of the world on a cruise. Um, and I can tell you that the single supplement on a, on a cruise program would be drastically more um, than what's here. In terms of inclusions, I see lots of questions have come in and I'll get to them in just a second. Um, so in terms of inclusions, uh, essentially, as with all of our programs, you're pretty well covered, except that there's you know, a couple of free days where you are really at leisure to do your own thing. So, you know, you have the hotel and breakfast, but um, the rest of the day, lunch and dinner are uh, are on your own. We will give you restaurant recommendations. Um, so for those who are a little bit more budget minded with eating out or for those who want to go to a Michelin star restaurant, we'll point you in the right direction. So we're not just like leaving you um, uh, completely at your, at your, to your own devices. Um, as I mentioned, there's transfers in and out from the airports um, in wh whichever city you arrive in, um, you'll be met and picked up and brought to the hotel to meet the group. Um, and the same thing in reverse for, for when you depart. Uh, city cards, very important. So we've put in these great super convenient handy city cards that enable you to use all the transportation system. Um, and in most cases, I think except for Stockholm, they uh, include uh, admission to all kinds of museums and galleries and all the rest of it. So there's no shortage of things to do. We have also carefully picked our four star hotels. So uh, as I said at the very beginning, um, we're not, uh, this isn't run like a normal tour group program. We don't stay in tour group hotels. We stay in boutique hotels that are smaller because we're a smaller group. Um, and it's important when you stay for five nights, it's to be a comfy place to stay. And I think that we found those and we have wonderful handpicked guides. Um, as far as exclusions, pretty much as per our regular programs, airfare, which we can quote you on, I'll mention, I'll talk about that in a second. Um, and, you know, of course, there's no touring included on the leisure days, but because you have those cards and because we're all intrepid travelers, um, that's um, something that uh, 
is not included in the program. Uh, and uh, talking about airfare, as I've said in webinars up till now, um, we're not sure where airfares are going to go, but all of these cities are quite uh, reachable through connections in Europe. So typically, Frankfurt, Amsterdam, you can connect into any of the cities um, on this program. So it's easy to get in and out. And as long as historical airfares hold true, you know, it's within the realm of what normal airfares cost to Europe in the thousand to fourteen hundred dollar range. So I'm going to now take a look at the questions and I have to put my glasses on for this. Um, but of course, if you have questions following up to this, I know this is a new program, a lot of new information, a different concept. So by all means, drop me a mail, drop Paula an email, and we will, um, uh, we will try and answer all your questions. So I'm going to address some of them now. Um, so for those of you who don't want to hang around for the questions, um, then uh, you can please, uh, um, so how much do you think we'll be walking on tour? So Lynn asked how much we think we'll be walking on tour on the tour days. So I would say that we will, we, we're never going to walk a marathon. So we will always, I'm mindful of sort of the average um, age of our members. So we try to accommodate everybody. We'll never, you know, we'll, we will walk for a good half the day. So three, four hours, but not in one go. Typically we'll walk for, you know, 20 minutes, half an hour. We'll stop, take a break. Maybe we'll go in for a coffee. So we're not in a rush because we have the time. But that being said, these are walking oriented tours. And we are also walking from the hotel to the train station or from the hotel to the port. Not big distances, um, but in those cases, you have to carry your luggage as well. Um, but we've, we've chosen hotels that are strategically located so that although there is a lot of walking, um, but you're, you know, in fairly close, close proximity. So I, I, I don't want to say it's these are walking tours, um, but it's not too, so much as to overwhelm you. Um, then a question relating to luggage. If you're a traditional, you have big rolling suitcases. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I, as long as your suitcases are rolling, but it just, they just need to be manageable. So if you think about flying into um, the airport, you know, which has, you know, you have to walk forever with your luggage to get out. Um, those kind of distances are what's involved. And, and sometimes there are cobblestone streets. So we are here for a longer time. In each city, we will also have identified places where you can do your laundry. So do yourself a favor and, you know, take whatever you would normally take and cut it in half. The, the lighter you travel, the more enjoyable this trip is. You know, what does that mean if you're somebody that likes to collect and gather souvenirs? Well, we also have time to point you to the post office so you can mail them home. Um, but it is, uh, it is better always to travel as light as you can um, because we don't have the, uh, the, the ability to have a lot of assistance. Some of the hotels we have a porterage available in, so they'll bring it up to your room, but you still have to, to sort of get it there. Um, if you have specific questions about that, more let me know. Um, then uh, let's see, can you hire a private guide during the free days? Absolutely, you can probably even hire our guide. So if there, and again, this is the idea behind these trips and, and so many trips that I've been on and people have said, I'd like to do this and I'd like to do that. By all means, you can ask us, we can either point you in the right direction, you can go to Airbnb and go on their experiences where we've often even found guides ourselves. Um, so you can do whatever you would like we're here to help. Um, we're not here so much to help as, in terms of programming in advance. So, so we can't really build customized tour for everybody um, because we're, but, but along the way um, between your own research and myself and our local guide, we'll make sure that you get to see whatever you want to see. Um, let's see what currency is used in these countries. So Denmark and Sweden have their own currencies, the kroner, uh, and uh, the rest of the countries, Finland and all the Baltic countries are on the Euro. So that makes it easier. So you've only got to deal with the Euro, but Sweden and Denmark use the Kroner. They'll accept Euros as well, but they also accept credit cards everywhere. So <laughs> that's the default. Just take your credit card 
and you're good to go. Um, the brochure is coming shortly. And the weather, well, it's summertime. Now we are in Scandinavia, um, but even so the temperature is probably usually in the low to mid twenties, but it can get even warmer. Um, in recent years, even uh, Sweden and, and Finland have gotten even up to 30 degrees. That would be an anomaly, um, but at night it's typically cooler sort of in the high teens. This is the best time to go and that's why we're going in July uh, because uh, the rest of the year the weather can already get quite nippy. Uh, and uh, suggested packing tips, uh, what are the suggested packing tips to keep your luggage light? Um, just take half as what you would normally take of everything because we'll find places for you to launder it along the way um, and not the hotel laundry but rather um, you know public um, laundromats and dry cleaning and all the rest of it. So um, we may even do a webinar on how to pack for a trip like this so that you don't have to feel like you're taking 30 days worth of stuff with you. Um, perfect, good. I don't see any other questions, but we are here. Oh, how easy. Ah, oh, yeah, sorry, one more question came in from uh, Dave. Um, English. This is the other beautiful thing about Scandinavia is particularly Denmark, Sweden and Finland is everybody speaks English. I mean, it's hard. To, you'd be hard pressed to find somebody that doesn't speak at least some English, if not fluent English. The Baltic countries a little bit less so, particularly older people in those countries that grew up during the communist um, regime. But if you find a young person, they will speak English. So it's really easy to get around language wise. If there are any other programs, uh, please do drop us a note. And uh, I appreciate you having taken the time to uh, learn about our first five by five program at Wheel and Anchor. Uh, there's uh, more coming um, because we got great response to this concept when we did our trip inspiration survey earlier this year. Next week, we're gonna be doing our webinar on our uh, yet again deferred iconic Trans-Siberian Railway program. Um, unfortunately, we had to push it back by another year like all the other trips that were scheduled for this year, almost all the other trips. Um, so if you'd like to find out about that, we're going in September of 2022 and our webinar is next week. Paula has posted the link to that webinar if you wanna sign up for it in the chat box. Uh, and that wraps us up for today. So thank you again. Um, it's been a pleasure as always, been a delight for me to introduce this program that I'm so passionate about. I would love to have you join me uh, on this five by five program in Scandinavia and the Baltics. Um, and look forward to seeing you all again very soon. <laughs>